Yeah, we're filming. I'm just waiting. We got one person on right now. Yep. Yep. Nope. Nope, not yet. We're going to give it a little bit. All right, two more minutes. I'm gonna start this at three o'clock. Just explain. Gonna wait for a few more people to hop on here. We sent this out to a lot of people, so I'm sure there's gonna be quite a, a few hopping on. This is in central Oklahoma. Time. I can't see the time when I'm recording on this phone. 2.59. Things, this gimbal's pretty cool. Yeah, I want one. Thirty-six people on here, right. and it's being recorded, so no pressure. Howdy. Forty-two, forty-three. Okay, I think it's right at three o'clock. Get that verified real fast. Okay, well, thank you guys for hopping on. We still are, our counts climbing here. I'm Casey Harriet. I'm the R3 coordinator for the state of Oklahoma. I work for NWTF and ODWC. And today we have Lincoln County Game Warden, Jacob Harriet. Um, he is going to be skinning a deer here for us and then quartering it up as well. Uh, there's many ways to do this. This is just one of many. And uh, I'm gonna try to answer questions as we go. Here I see little, I've never done this before, so I'm seeing the questions pop up. So I'll try to answer them as we go here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this guy around and we'll get started. All right guys, so this is a deer. It was harvested this morning. It's three o'clock now. It's been good and cold, so she's been fine to hang. Uh, the first thing you do when you go to skin one of these things is I always clean up the back legs here. So these tendons are what it's pretty much universal to hang any sort of meat animal. Uh, but so I already skinned that down. I did that on the tailgate of the truck, put the gambrel through there, and now it's good to go. So the next step, this is just how the normal field dressing goes. So you make a decision in the guts, remove the internals. Uh, but now you can see we have skin left here to here. So I always start by just cleaning this up. <laughs> and you wanna make sure that you're not cutting uh, into the meat. You wanna leave that all together. There we go. So now that we got that off, that should peel real easy. Usually you gotta kinda help it where it's caught at and then peel it down. Someone asked if it's easier to skin a doe versus a buck. Uh, yes and no. So, so the, the bucks of course are a little bit bigger and just depending on the age, they might be a little tougher. This is a pretty young doe. So she is very easy to skin. Just, I mean, 
mean, she's young, young and tender, basically. Uh, and that makes it easy. But I, I wouldn't say a buck Oop. is any harder than a doe. The only thing uh, that might be is when you get down to the end and you're getting around the head, of course, with the, the bucks, you're going to have your antlers to work around. So there we go. We got that started. Peels down really easy. I usually take my hand. I can get my knuckles and kind of make a fist and just go down with it. All right, so that's one side. We're going to do the same thing on the other. And I, I would recommend having a sharp knife to this. You'll cut yourself with a doll knife way more than you will with a sharp knife. And you, you can see I, I'm staying right in between the skin and the meat. So I'm not, I'm trying my best not to cut into the meat. I'm also doing my best not to get hair all over it. So anytime you cut uh, through the skin, you're gonna get uh, hair that slips off there. So you can see there where I actually made the cut, there's some hair slipping off. And I just try to avoid that as much as possible. And also that hair is gonna really doll up your knife. So I'm just going right in between the meat and that, that hide. Get it going. I can really push that down. All right, we get to the tail. So the tail, it's like anything else, it's got vertebrae. You get a good knife, you can go right through it. Oh, sorry. Missed that. Well, the tail's gone now. <laughs> and then just kind of cheat that down. Usually I, I try not to cut through the hide on that, but that just went really easy. Knife's very sharp. You guys can see that just peels super, super easy. All right, so we like to work smarter, not harder. So we can crank this here up. Just makes it easier. I'm not bent over trying to work on it. You can tell this dough is extremely healthy. She's real good and fat. And so this is, now I'm getting to where I made the cut when I, uh, or when it was, field, she was field dressed. And so usually whenever you cut it, you're gonna have to go over the knife and kind of clean it up. And you don't have to have one of these fancy tripods to uh, hang one of these up. I've done many of them just out of a tree or off a porch or anything like that. So now we're up here to the brisket where my incision stop for my field dressing. So you just kind of work that down. Where can you get one of these tripods? Someone asks. I'm not sure this is actually our wildlife divisions. They were nice enough to let me use it. Uh, I'm sure you can buy them at a sporting goods store. I just don't have any. I don't have any experience with them. But this was nice. I actually keep this in a shop and it's portable. So this morning we, we just got it and brought it out here. You can see this red. That's just trauma from the, the impact of the shop. I will say one thing that I don't like about this tripod as much as I do like a tree. As you can see, I'm having to walk, work around this deer instead of spinning the deer to me. So usually if you're hanging on a tree, you can actually just kind of spin the deer and get where you need it to be instead of having to walk all the way around it. And so this is actually the uh, entry hole for the shot or the exit hole for the shot. So you can kind of use that as a handle, mm -hmm. get your finger in there, pull it down. And basically all you're doing is just, you're just working this hide down around this deer and it's gonna get a little a little bit different when you get around the shoulders. And you can see that's kind of where I'm at now because that, that hide is gonna work underneath the brisket and kind of get in between the shoulders and the stomach. So you kind of gotta just work that down and around there. Sorry guys, trying to maneuver this thing with. Um... And see how this hide's bunching up. You can just take that and drop it over the head and give you a little more room to work. Continue down and usually this brisket you got to use a little bit of knife work to kind of get it off there <laughs> and you just kind of want to stay even on each side so i got that side a little further down than this side so i'm going to come back over here same deal this is this is actually my the entrance wound on the deer use that as the handle flip that on. get in here and work on this brisket
Uh, we just sent a push notification out via our Outdoor Oklahoma app, so or Go Outdoors app. So I'm sure everybody that's watching probably has that app and probably got that jumped on. It's easier to skin when hung by the head, just saying. What is it? Uh, someone says it's easier to skin when hung by the head, just saying. Okay. Yeah, like we said, there's many ways. There's a million ways to do it. It's just whatever you want. <laughs> Someone said, let's start over. He missed the first part. <laughs> this will be recorded. You can go back and watch it. Yeah, you can use a tennis ball, you're right, or some sort of ball at the very top. Wrap a, how, how do you, how would I explain that? You know, I'm talking about that, like a big rock, and then you wrap the hide around it. Yeah, put a, just use some sort of uh, force. Pull it down. Yeah, and it right. just inside turns so it inside out. Here, I'm, I'm through the elbows. I have a gap in between here around the front leg, so that's kind of where you want to be at. So we're just gonna continue to work that down. Sorry. And depending on the deer, I usually set my knife down for this. Cause put a little bit of pressure on it, so I got that. I can reach around that leg now. I put on there and just give a little force down. Now, I will say this is where it does differ for bucks to does. It seems like, for whatever reason, on those uh, bucks, it's much harder to get it down around the wrists. They're just tougher, or they have more muscle down there. But uh, you just work that down and get to the joint is kind of the goal. And now we're here at the shank, and there's not a whole lot of meat on the shank. But we try to salvage it anyways. I'm going to lift this up a little bit. <laughs> and you just get down here where it's a little tighter you just start working it around and this is the uh, the shank of the deer so there's not a ton of meat on there but i always save it it makes good stews and roasts and stuff real tendony yeah it's got a lot of tendons in it more bone and tendon than meat, but still good. All right, so we want to get where that elbow bends. I'm there on this one. John from Boys Ranch Town in Edmond says hi. Who? John from Boys Ranch Town in Edmond. Hi, John. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I know who that is. How you doing, John? I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Alright, so now we're at the both elbows. So, this is where you might get a little squeamish if you don't like sounds. <laughs> so you cut through those tendons on that elbow. And we're basically wanting to remove the lower joint and keep the upper joint. So I cut through that joint the best I could. Take this up. Spin mm. it around. Spin that around. We've dislocated that joint. Coming in underneath, there's just some tendons in there. And we're keeping that together. So we'll do that on the other side. So right in the middle of that joint, cut those tendons, cut it on the back side, and I always go all the way around. Pick that leg up, pick it up, and spin it around. Mm, that's some ASMR. Yeah. It's like a great, great trip to the chiropractor. <laughs> so now we can get down around this neck. Same thing, now we're just continuing to skin it down. We've made it past the obstacles of the shoulder. And so this is about the only time I will <laughs> intentionally cut uh, holes in the hide. Because like I said, anytime you cut holes in the hide, you're dulling your knife and you're, uh, you're risking uh, hair getting on the meat. You can cut a little hole in there and it just gives you something to grab onto. Casey Visniski said, hey Harriet family. <laughs> Ask her if she's got out of prison. <laughs> so an another thing that might differ a little bit on your uh, your does to your buck is usually on these does there's not a ton of meat on these cats. It's kind of, you know, there's just not a whole lot to them. But those bucks, especially this time of year, when they're rutting, they carry a lot of meat around that neck. 
So, and, uh, a lot of times people don't even save the next one just because they're not that much. Oh, uh, is the roadkill registry still existing? Roadkill registry. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, we do, however, uh, and this might be what you're talking about. If, if you find a roadkill or you're wanting to salvage that meat, uh, you can get a tag from your local game board, and all you got to do is just give, them, give one of us a call. We can get you a tag, and basically we just have to document where that animal came from because if you have a deer that you don't have a way to prove that you have legal uh, ownership of it, you're in legal possession of a deer. And that's bad. But yeah, if you find a roadkill, hit one with your car or something like that. Just give your local warden a call and get you a tag. If we don't answer, leave us a message. Uh, it depends on county, but I usually tell people, if you leave me a message, go ahead and pick up the deer if I can't get back with you or real busy this time of year. And I would rather see that meat be used than wasted. All right, so we're getting kind of right there at the base of the head. So this is always kind of tricky, but I always come in here and I'll cut this around the, the neck. And now you got to get the vertebrae right here. So we may or may not have it right. It just kind of depends. If you have a meat saw or a hatchet or something like that, they work really good at cleaning this up here. But I think we might actually just let that hang for the time being. Okay. Uh, but that, see, you can, it's bone. There's a few little layers of meat there. Not a whole lot that you can salvage on that. Uh, but that is basically the skinning of the deer. You cut that off. That goes in your discard pile. Or if you want to save the hide or do whatever you want with it. But that is your skin deer. Okay, now we're gonna quarter. Yep, so I'm quarter it down. I got my cooler ready. Uh, so it, it's kind of up to you, personal preference. You might get this okay. What state and county are you in? We're in uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma County, right? Or Oklahoma Logan? County. Oklahoma County in Oklahoma. Uh, so you can see these shoulder blades here. There's this meat in between it. So there's there, a bar right here. Can you spin him a little bit? Thank you. So there, there is no bone connecting the shoulder blade to the carcass. It's all just meat and tendons. So you just come in here underneath it and you can actually kind of pry that up. And there is absolutely nothing to this. I usually try to get some of the side meat with it, but there's whole, not a whole lot there. Come oh. on. And then that's your shoulder. Get the same thing up side. Someone said I recently started keeping neck meat. Yeah, we uh, canned ne neck meat. It really breaks down all those tendons in there. It's pretty yummy. That one has quite a bit of trauma. Yeah, so see, you got quite a bit of trauma. This red gooey stuff, after this thing sits in the cooler, you want oh. to uh, discard that. You don't want to keep Thank you, stuff. big game biologist. Watch for outside the window. So when you need stuff, your big game biologist Perry will come in. <laughs> oh, got that head right. Thanks, sir. <laughs> All right, so now service. We'll lower this thing and get what we can work on. So both shoulders are off. That was quick. work on it so this is the, the gut cavity there's a piece of meat that runs here on a, on a cow or a pig it would be the flank someone asked how the deer die I believe by an arrow yes yeah an archery hunter legally harvested this deer and his nice enough places and they're getting the meat back they just get a free process so you can see what I did there. I peeled that meat back where the stomach attaches. These are your tenderloins inside here. But just to kind of clear up my workspace, I always come right down. And where my knife stops, that's actually the uh, the ribs. ribs. That's where your ribs start. So you can come in here, and I just... Do I need over on that side? Right. Here, hold I'm on. Just pull oh. So I'm just going to come down and trace that ribs. Oh. That's your uh, your flank meat or your flank. There's a, It's not very much on a deer, uh, especially a young doe. Some of your bucks is actually pretty good meat. But you just come here, trace the ribs, and you just come down like that. And then that's like your flank steak on a cake. Throw that in the cooler. Uh, not a whole lot in this rib cage stuff. Occasionally, you can get, you know, a couple layers of meat here off the side of the brisket. So, like that. That's just a, a good hunk of meat. All this white stuff is fat. Uh, 
I cut all that off before I eat any of it. It's just, it, it makes your meat taste gamey. Most people that don't like uh, venison, it's because they've had meat that wasn't prepared properly and they eat that fat. That's where all their uh, gaminess is stored. What knife are you using? Uh, it is a buck. 1190 maybe? <laughs> this, this knife has used, or gone through a lot of deer. <laughs> oh, I don't know how to get back to the, to the... Oh, here they are. There was no biologist with a cordless saw at all when I was quartering my last Oklahoma deer. Can I get a partial refund on my <laughs> license? <laughs> all right, so now we're at our tenderloins. We got this cleaned up. So you can see this muscle here is a tenderloin. Very tender meat. It, it's, it's really good. So you come in here where it meets the leg, you just make an incision right there. You can kind of get underneath it with your fingers. And so basically this tenderloin runs underneath. Someone said, when is someone gonna, or when are we gonna extend the rifle season for more than one week? And I believe uh, it's longer. It's 16 day rifle season currently. Yes. So you see, so these are the ribs right here on the back. And I'm just getting on that, and I'm just barely touching it with the knife. It's actually doing most of the work for, for me coming off there. Let's see if, I can. if you guys can see that. <laughs> so it, it's just coming down real really? nice and easy. Gimbal just freaked out. So just working it down. And so basically your tenderloin runs right on the inside uh, of your short ribs. But that, that's your tenderloin, good stuff. Some would argue one of the best pieces on a deer. Yep, that's pretty good. All right, same thing, we make that cut right there. <laughs> My tenderloins never make it out of the field attached to the deer too yummy to let dry out. <laughs> All right, same deal, we're just gonna work this down. Yep, I agree. Any tips for better success on public land? My only tip is to, when you're tired, when you walked in as far as you can, walk a little more. <laughs> and I would say the number one thing I see people doing wrong is not paying attention to the wind. Yeah. Okay. We got all that done. We'll get down here in the neck while I got it semi high. See if I can get much off this. So on a buck, this whole slab, they got a piece of meat on these does. They're, they're pretty lean. So we'll come in Just here. cut down the middle. Actually, I'll tell you what, let, let's do the back strap first. Okay. Right. Okay, so back straps. We took the tender ones off the inside of the ribs. The back strap runs the full length on the outside of the ribs. So there's a hip bone. You can feel it right here if I put my thumb on there. So I usually just come in and I go straight to the spine. This is the spine. So I make a horizontal cut and then I go vertical and I just trace that spine. So my knife blade is running right down along the spine right now. And I just work all that all the way down into the neck. So this is a whole lot of fat, a whole lot of nasty stuff. So I'm actually just gonna remove that. This would all be, be trimmed off anyways. It's not good to eat, it's silver skin, fat, all that stuff. Uh, so it's not any good anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that off, save me some work later, get that out of the way. And you can actually see so this is the, that muscle. This is no cut. That is just the muscle that runs up and down the deer's back. That's the back, back strap. strap. So now I got that cut. I got to take my knife and I go in and I find that first rib. Get your fingers back in there. Don't cut yourself. All right, so there we go. So there's my first rib. And now I'm just doing the <laughs> same thing as the tender one, working that down. Love our Oklahoma game wardens, great people. If you had a bad experience, most likely because you were doing something wrong. I try to be pretty friendly. <laughs> I'm nice until you don't let me. It's the same thing. I'm just barely touching this with the knife. It's just kind of falling out there on its own. And of course, on a uh, a bigger mature deer, you're gonna have much bigger back straps. Some of the the bigger buck back straps are pretty impressive but you just basically follow that and that will eventually run out uh, you can actually do that before you pull the shoulders off but it doesn't really matter it's kind of personal preference but that runs down and then that can be on the outside so that is your back strap is are they allowed to clean up the public hunting area or 
go or go area I go to or would I need permission before I do that? Clean uh, up the public hunting area. Probably clean the deer. Oh. Uh, I would say just contact whatever area you like <laughs> contact that uh, biologist there. Uh, so in Lincoln County, my county, I actually have no public land. So I don't have a whole lot of experience with people on public land. Uh, I, I work some in the neighboring counties. I know you're perfectly fine to uh, field dress it on there, but if, if you're gonna start butchering it stuff, I would definitely talk to the, uh, either the, that local warden or the local biologist that runs that area. If it was in my county, I'd say it's fine, but it's probably not gonna be in my county because I have no public land. What's the department's roadkill policy? Call a warden or photo it, then load it up. Uh, so on the road kills, uh, you, you have to have uh, something that says where you got that animal. So, like I, I was saying earlier, I always have people call me. You didn't so, get that fat off beforehand, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so on the road kills, if you find one, call the warden, leave him a voicemail that gives you, you know, just record that you've made contact. In my county, I'm 100% fine. If I don't answer that phone, I'm tied up, then take that deer with you, and I'll get with you later. Uh, usually, if it's an antler deer, I will give you a, uh, well, all the time. If it's an antler deer, I'll give you a carcass tag. And if it's a female deer, deer I'll either give you a non-legal carcass tag, or I'll just jot your information down and basically save that information to show that you have legal possession of that animal. And, and those non-legal tags do not count toward your season limit. They're just like a, oh, basically it shows that it was not legally harvested and we're giving you permission to take it. So kind of getting right down here at the bottom of it. Getting a little difficult, got some tendons here. <laughs> Didn't get the cut all the way down. Got people's mouths of water in. And then there is that backstrap that just kind of pulls out. Backstrap number two, that's good stuff. When I cut these up, I usually cut them into thirds. I'll pull this uh, silver skin off the back of them and I just grill them in uh, big pieces. I actually don't cut them into steaks or anything. All right, now we're down here on the neck. So you can see where our backstrap came through. Yeah. You just kind of come up here. And the, so that if you think of a vertebrae, you know, there's, there's like a four prone basically. So there's little knots you got to cut around but I'm gonna just work my way down there. This makes really good stew meat, or if you want to uh, cut some of this out, you can grind it. If you got a really good grinder, you can just grind it as it is. But it's basically just lots of layers of meat. There's some tendons in there and stuff, but a really good slow cook. Usually I do a roast out of them. Do you need a hunting license for a roadkill deer? Uh, you do not, but in our new system, so you do, you're not required to have a hunting license. However, when we give you those non-legal tags, that will go into your uh, account, which your account, basically, if you've ever had a hunting or fishing license in the state of Oklahoma, you have an account and you have to, it goes in there. So if you've never had a hunting or fishing license, I just have a make an account and then I can put that in, that, uh, that license in that account. But if you don't have an account, I can't get you one. But it's pretty easy, it only takes a little bit and you just do it online, fill it out and then I can get you that tag. Someone asked, what do we do with the guts and carcass? Uh, so the guts, I usually uh, leave in the field. So wherever I harvest the deer at, I'll do that. So the, the <laughs> carcasses, you know, Go ahead. the Sorry. carcasses are a big issue. We have a lot of people dump them on the county road. It's actually illegal to dump them on the county roads or in public places. Uh, so I always tell people, if you're fortunate enough to have land, just put them on your property and you can dump them on your property. Put them in a ditch somewhere your neighbor's dogs aren't gonna drag them out, stuff like that. Uh, but if you are uh, in the city or whatever, it is perfectly acceptable. Get you a big trash sack. You can, I usually put the hide and stuff in the chest cavity, put it in there, and then you're good to go as far as uh, putting it in your trash service. I don't recommend throwing a whole deer, serve, deer carcass in your trash service, because even though it's uh, perfectly legal, it could uh, you know, draw some attention. And we want to look good. We don't want our neighbors thinking that we're throwing our, our wives or significant others in the dumpster. <laughs> so. um, you might explain what you're okay. doing here. Basically, I split the two hams. This is the biggest muscle on the deer. And the pelvic bone is in here. And I'm just going to work this down. Around the pelvic bone? Yeah, around the pelvic bone. And it, it's kind of it's kind of tricky and it takes a little bit of feel to it. But that bone is... Uh, 
Oh, it's just kind of odd shape. So I just work my knife all the way down around it and I'm just putting my blade in there, pointing it towards, see, so you can kind of see that bone right there that I'm tracing out. Mm -hmm. And basically what we're trying to get to is this ball joint. So if you guys can see that there's a ball joint there, it's basically the hip of the animal. So we can see, see that ball joint right there. Out. And we're gonna work our way down. Just keep on working this down. So, our gambrel, we have two points, they're balanced. That's why they don't fall down. So, when I completely remove this, this leg is gonna fall down. So, usually at this point, I'll lower it. So, uh, someone asked, is it legal to go after a deer if it runs off on private land? I didn't know this was gonna be a ask the game board in session, too. <laughs> <laughs> so if you shoot a deer and it r runs on private property, is that what you're asking? Yes. Uh, so no, if you cross on the private property, you're trespassing. You have to have permission from each landowner that you go to. So just because you shoot a deer doesn't give you right to run all over the country. You have to have permission from your private land. So a lot of times, and it just kind of depends on how it works, I'll actually lower this down and let this carcass hit the ground, and a lot of times it'll snap off on you. Did he take the reciprocating saw back in? Oh. So usually those vertebrae are pretty, pretty relaxed now. So I actually just set them on my cooler. And you can fold up here my knife. So you get, get a good grip on your meat. This is that ball joint that's already separated off there. I'm just gonna get around that. Continue to trace that bone. I'm trying to ask all y'all's questions, but still give Jacob the opportunity to explain what he's doing here. So you see that hip bone right there, get around it. Comes off really, really easy. There you go. So that's your rear quarter. So you, you don't want to drop any of the meat that you're planning on eating from the ground. So I always put that in the cooler. Same thing with these joints. We're gonna make a cut, make a cut, and then I always use a cooler for labor. Mm. Crack that right off. Same thing, you got tendons in here. And you can actually remove these uh, hind legs before you uh, process it. Makes it a little bit easier. So now you just got your big main tendon. Cut that <laughs> off, and then that's just your scrap. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So Follow the hip joint. Yep, we're going to just trace this bone. Find that joint. Oops, it's better to have no sun. Yeah, and we're going to make sure that we're not going to drop this thing on the ground. Because for whatever reason, once you get dirt on it, you can't get dirt off of it, it seems like. Same with hair. Yeah, same with the hair. So there goes that ball joint. Just tracing that bone all around there. And and guys, you're not gonna get this perfect. It's, I mean, it's probably possible, but I'm not that good. So we're just gonna trace this around. And if you leave any meat on there, you can always come back and get it. So. See here, this is that pelvic bone. We did pretty good getting all that meat off there. There might be a chunk or two left. So now this is just where we come back in and we can clean that up. We wanna get as much as we can off of there. Uh, some people do eat the ribs on this dough. Uh, it's probably not necessarily worth eating. There's just not much meat on these little ones. Uh, now you get a buck, they usually have some very good ribs and the rib meat is very good. You just gotta slow cook it. But on this one, probably not a whole lot to it. Oh, that person did mean clean up the trash around the area at my local hunting oh, spot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we love that. Now, now, depending on the area, 
some of our areas that we actually own, you have to have either a hunting license, a fishing license, or a conservation passport to be on that area. They're actually all marked uh, on there, like on the, uh, in our regulations, they'll tell you can you the cons conservation passport or not. But yeah, we would love for you to pick up trash. I always try to tell people to leave it better than you found it. Right. So just some hair on there, I'm gonna take that off. I will usually soak these guys on ice for five to six days, drain out the water, put more ice in, make sure you keep it really cool. But as you can see, our, our waste pile over here, there's not really a whole lot of meat on there. Uh, these ribs are just so skinny, I'll show you. There's just not much to them. So some people will bone these ribs and it's just, there's nothing on there. there. There's just not much. Most of that's fat. There's a little bit of meat in there, but not a whole lot on these small ones. Like I said, the bigger ones, you you got more, but there's just not much on these little guys. And that fat's what makes it taste real gamey. I don't like eating deer fat. Yeah. Someone asked if we're going to do more of these in the future, and uh, the answer is yes. So I think we're going to try to attempt to just film, not do a live, because it would just we would be there all night, um, to debone off off the, the hams and the shoulders, all this meat and kind of the process of what we grind, what we um, vacuum seal, how we cut the tenderloins and the back straps, what roasts we use and even um, bone broth and stuff. So I'm going to attempt to kind of put a YouTube video together with that and then pro and then just put it on our, on our channel, our Outdoor Oklahoma channel. Um, but yeah, those are the plans so far for it. Uh, yeah, all of that fits right down here in this cool little cooler and you basically you put ice on it or a lot of people will put ice in bags and then put it over the meat because it doesn't saturate the meat and like drain the meat as much. Um, it keeps for a better flavor of the meat. So you do this for days before you go on to the second round of the process. And also people let their deer hang for a few days before they even do this. This deer was killed this morning, but normally you can let a deer hang in the cold weather like this for for days it's kind of yeah. like aging your deer as like long they do. as the weather's good I, I like to let them hang for a bit so another way you can do this instead of taking this out as an actual quarter if you don't have a lot of cooler room and stuff you can actually go in and just debone this meat or debone this back legs and you just actually cut all the meat off of it it saves a little bit of room in there i like quartering it because i can take this i got a big cutting board i can put on it and i can separate those muscles out a little more organized than i can you know hanging up but mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, deer. One more ask a game warning question. Uh, where did you learn how to skin? Where did I learn how to skin? Skin. Uh, Not YouTube. No, probably. Although that's a great source. I probably started, you know, skinning uh, fur bear animals. I used to trap a lot. My dad taught me how. He was a big trapper. So I'd skin, you know, raccoons, bobcats, uh, coyotes, stuff like that. It's basically the same on a deer as it is on a coyote. Uh, deer just peel a little bit easier. Yeah. Probably. Just something, I mean, to me, it's it's a family thing. We've always done it together. It's uh, something I learned from my family, and hopefully my kids will learn from me. But. All right. Well, that concludes this video. We're going to wrap it up, and then, um, yeah, stay tuned for another. Um, absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, and then stay tuned for another demonstration of the rest of the process of it. Thanks, guys. Now to figure out how to end this thing.